Hello and welcome to Keen on Keys. A friend of mine asked me to add an output to his keyboard. He wants to use it on stage. It's the Casio SA7. This one is really small and really filthy. But nothing serious, just dirt that should come off easily. Nothing damaged, no stickers. This looks as if they plan to install an output jack. And in fact, this model is more or less identical to the SA1. It's the same housing. They just omitted the output jack and changed the color. Let's open it. Only a few screws on the bottom side. It's quite bare inside. This is the place for the output jack. Here's the sound chip. And this should be the amplifier. The bottom piece has a date stamp. It's a little bit hard to see, but it says June 1990. The speaker is loose. And there are no more screws. The board is held in place by these clamps. As usual, a simple key mechanism and rubber buttons. That's it. Now all parts will take a bath. And here they are, nice and clean. These are the connections for the output jack. I'm wondering why there are seven of them. If I can find out how they should be connected, I could use a small stereo jack like this one. But I want to install a large mono jack, and it wouldn't fit in this place. The board is also a little bit filthy. I will clean it with a brush. Now it's time to find the right place for the jack. This is where the SA-1 has its output jack. But there's not enough space for this large jack. Over here is a lot of space. But there's this additional piece of plastic. And I would have to glue the jack to the bottom piece. I don't like that. I'm wondering if it's possible to place the jack over here. This would be ideal. The two corners would hold the jack in place, so it won't twist around when I fix it with a nut. And the wires wouldn't have to be so long. I will test it. I use some tape to hold the jack in place. That looks good. This is the place. I have to cut a bit of this plastic. Hmm, that was easy. I push the jack against a piece of tape to mark the right place. But I need to drill from the outside. Maybe this will help. It's hard to get it on camera, but now there's a little mark and I can see where to drill. It fits perfect and I will only need a nut to fix it. I just solder the speaker. I would have liked to use these connections. It's a pity, but I really can't figure out how exactly they work. So I will do it the easy way and simply connect the two cables to the jack. This jack mutes the speaker when a plug is inserted. Here I will connect the red signal wire from the amp. This goes to the tip of the plug. And here I can connect the speaker again. And this is for the white ground wire. First I put back the rubber key contacts. Now I solder the signal and ground points. I will do a quick test if it's working, but I have to put in the buttons and keys first. Now it's time to connect the speaker again, with two new cables, the red signal cable and the white ground cable.
Let's try it. The speaker works as before. Now let's see what kind of keyboard this is. It has 32 mini keys. Or should I say micro keys? They are really small. We have 100 sounds. Quite remarkable for a keyboard of this size. The sounds are made by PCM samples with a low resolution. Two samples with independent volume and pitch envelopes are mixed together. And they are selected by the number buttons. You can only play two notes at a time. No manual FX like vibrato or sustain. 29 rhythms and 13 super accompaniment patterns. These are fixed patterns to play along. To start a rhythm or pattern, use the select button and the corresponding key. All buttons make this noise when pressed. Could be a little bit annoying in a live situation. The demo tune reproduces the Glenn Miller version of American Patrol. The volume control isn't working as usual. It has just five steps and it sounds as if the noise level always stays the same. Lower volume settings make the sound shorter. And there's another unusual thing, but I will show you later. Let's play some sounds. The default sound is piano. The synth piano is a little bit warmer. Electric organ. Jazz guitar. Some sounds seem to have reverb or delay, but these are just simulated by the envelope. Metal guitar. It's quite similar to the metal lead. There are a few bass sounds. Wood bass is one of my favorites. Snare bass. Mandolin. Here I can demonstrate the uncommon volume control. If you turn down the volume, the mandolin gets faster. And if you hold down the key while turning up the volume, the sound doesn't change. But new notes sound louder. Shamisen. Fantasy. Twinkle Echo Cathedral Plunk Extent <laughs> What a name Pearl drop. The release phase changes depending on how long you press a key. Some nice effects sounds like laser beam. And percussion sounds. Cowbell and clave.
Rock Drum. And we have a few split sounds, like piano slash flute. Let's try it with a beat. slash piano. I will play some rhythms for you. If I turn down the volume, you can hear that the sound of the hi-hat gets shorter. And here are some of the super accompaniments. They're quite funny, but not that useful. It's fantastic that this little thing has a hundred sounds on board. I have to say, I like most of them, especially the sound of X. They are all quite trashy and noisy because of the low resolution, but that's what makes them special and different from the sounds of today's keyboards. There are a lot of SA keyboards that share nearly the same sound chip and have almost the same sounds. The SA9, for example, is exactly the same, except for the color. It has the same demo tune and it's also missing an output. Some have drum pads and more demo tunes. And the polyphony and the number of sounds may differ. I will watch out for an SA10, with 4-node polyphony and larger keys. But for now, let's do a little multi-track recording with the SA7. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.